He's a phenomenal, he's a friend of mine. I've known him for, when he wasn't nobody, and now he's somebody. But I'm thankful that he had the opportunity to come and, and preach for us. Let's give Brother Jesse a hearty welcome. Jesse Arden, Brother Jesse Arden. God bless you, brother. the press, 
and the touch. Why don't you lay your Bibles down, lift your hands just as high as you can in the air unto Jesus, and let's pray for the Holy Ghost to have his way in this place right now. Lord, I'm asking that there be a mighty preaching spirit in this place today. Lord, that you bless us to open our minds and our hearts to receive your word, and that your perfect will would be done, that the doors of salvation would be open. Lord, let miracles and signs and wonders be loosed in this place today. In Jesus' name, why don't you give the Lord a good hand clap and a good shout before you see it. Praise the Lord, you may be seated. It is the view of this minister that there are three types of people who attend church. All three in some way affect God and the people around them. Either negatively or positively. There's no in between. There are those who throng God. There are those who press God. And there are those who touch God.
further. I thank God for Calvary. Yes. I thank God for the blood. I thank God that I'm able to be born again of the water into the spirit because of Calvary. I'm thankful for the cross. I'm thankful for the power of the cross. And Christianity is not Christianity without the cross. But the cross is not where it is because they Like, but 
you saved me. But you're not touching my wallet. You're not touching my CD collection. You're not touching my movies. Come on. Oh yeah, come on. I think I just hit a stump, Brother Bruce. I don't think we need to set parameters for God. If there's an area in our life that God wants to move or that God wants to fix, we ought to let it. Yeah. Hallelujah. Frogers don't move God, they frustrate Him. Not only do they lock God in a box, they also try to lock people in a box. Matthew 20, 29. And as they departed from Jericho, a great multitude followed him. And behold, two blind men sitting by the wayside, when they heard that Jesus passed by, cried out, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, thou son of David. And the multitude rebuked them. Because they should hold their peace. But they cried the more, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord,
that looking good and being cool are the most important things. But we Christians know otherwise. Right. The view of the press is that fashion is more important than modesty. Man. I said the view of the press is that the fashion is more important than modesty. I've come to tell you that the Bible says otherwise. That if you can't be modest without being fashionable, then who cares about being fashionable? I hope you're not shooting for the cover of Vogue magazine. I hope you're not shooting for the cover of, of whatever other magazine there is out there to be on, my friend. Man. I hope the youth conference isn't a runway for a fashion foe for you kids. Oh, come on now. I'm wearing this suit for God. When you get up at 6 o'clock in the morning and you do your devotions, are you wearing a suit or are you in your PJs? Now wait, if your argument stands to correct that you're, you're dressing up for God, you put that suit on at 6 o'clock in the morning. Who are you dressing up for? Why are you wearing that dress, huh? To look cool or to look good for God? The view, I'll, I'll move on before I hurt my belt. The view of the press is to only fellowship with people of a certain race or social class. Friends, guess what? We live in a multicultural world. There is white folks. Forsake doctrine and embrace liberalism. They will forsake 
as stated before, modesty for fashion. They will forsake Christian standards of holy living that I know mathematics preaches because I've heard it with my own ears to fit in with the worldly cloud, uh, crowd. They will forsake purity for a moment of lustful pressure, pleasure. I'll tell you what they won't do. They won't come to an altar call. That's not why they're here. But these are the kinds of people that when you need a touch from God, you just kind of need to ignore them. Amen. I'm not going to let somebody else's opinion stop me from touching you. That's right. Amen. Amen. It's, <laughs> we have a press in this country. It's called the media. That's right. That's right. Right. Amen. They show up at everything. They're there every time something's going on. That's right. But they don't Have you ever heard this before? It came from somebody in the press. Man, that choir stank. Ooh. Heard that before? No yes. hands. Yes. Amen. Or, ooh, she cannot sing. No. What they let all her up there for? This is conference. She can't sing. Yes, they are. To a press person, talent is the issue, but talent is not the issue. Right. right. The issue is whether you are worshiping or criticizing because you can't do both. If a song or a sermon is done as unto the Lord and it's for His glory and the praise and not the praise of man, it doesn't matter a flip to God if it's on key or stylish. So matter, why should it matter to you? I'm going to give you an example. Little boy. I'm going to have a boy we're going to name him Isaiah. I can, I can just picture in my mind. He's three or four years old. And he's drawing his daddy a picture. I'm, I'm honestly not expecting Picasso or Michelangelo to come on. on, that, on I'm expecting squiggly lines, stick figures. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Oh, but wait a minute. Now when he gives me that picture, I'm going to be floored. squiggly lines and I'm, I'm, right. anyone got kids right. that ever happened to you yeah. it's not Michelangelo it's not Picasso but you put it on the refrigerator anyway why because talent is not the issue yeah. we've got a heavenly father that has some children here on earth and he's letting us know that talent is not the issue the issue is an
Let's clap for Ian to the floor. You in the press? No. Yes. <laughs> Three things the woman with the issue of blood had to get to God and touch it. How's it look? I'm just kidding. She wasn't there to go through the motion. In fact, she interrupted a program. If you read it right, Jesus was on his way to heal Jairus' daughter. I believe it was. Don't quote me on that. But he was on his way to do a miracle. And the procession of normality stops because this woman comes in with an issue. God just has a way of interrupting programs. Oh, man, he ruined that song dancing around that church. No, he didn't. He may have interrupted your little program. But he was in a touch with God. All right. Hallelujah. And she was certainly wasn't there to socialize. The first thing that she had was purpose. Right. Yeah. Yes, she is. God is not punishing you by giving you a trial or a situation to go through. He is giving you purpose in your prayer, in your worship. Speaking of Lazarus, Jesus said, this sickness is not unto death. It's not going to kill you. Amen, that's right. I know you don't see the light at the end of the tunnel yet. I know you can't figure out how you're going to get out of that mess. Amen. But it's not going to kill you. That's right. We can't have a miracle without the malady. Right. We can't have a healing without sickness. Right. We can't have deliverance without a trial. Amen. We can't have We need to meet our problems head on with faith and said, okay, God, give me purpose in my prayer. Give me purpose in my worship. That lady had a purpose that day. Her purpose was to touch God and get healed. And when she was not down on herself, self-pitying herself, man, I'm just going to die with this sickness. She said, if I can just touch the hem of his garment. The second thing she had was desperation. That's right. Amen. That's right. We must be desperate That's right. Amen. Right. Yeah. before we can get a miracle. Amen. The woman tried everything, nothing worked. That's right. She had nothing left. The Bible says she spent all of her living Amen. trying to get this sickness healed. That's right. And now she was desperate. Unless you truly and desperately desire a change in your situation or in your life, don't expect God to change it for you. That's right. Amen. Good job. That's Some right. of you are content with your problems. Amen. Some of you are content being halfway Christians. Right. As long as you're content, there ain't going to be no change. You're expecting God to just vocally talk to you or to step down in some kind of th uh, theophany or manifestation. It's not going to work that way. Right. God is waiting for you to want to change. Yeah. He's waiting for you to want to be delivered. He's waiting for you to get desperate. Right. Right. Amen. Yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. And unfortunately, I can't create that in you. That's right. It's just something you have to have. Yeah. Right. And finally, she had faith and expectation. If I can touch him, I will be made whole. Right. No ifs, ands, or buts. I believe that if I can get to him, if I can touch him with my worship, with my prayer, there's no doubt about it. If I touch God, what he has is going to flow into me, and I'm going to get what I need. Amen. Let's look at Acts 3 together. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man laid from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an alms. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. Look at verse 5. And he gave heed unto 
them expecting to receive something. Right. He didn't know what he was going to get, but he did know this thing for sure. That these were two apostolic, anointed, Holy Ghost filled preachers that had walked into his life. And he was expecting something. Expectation is the birthplace of the miraculous. We need to come to church every time the doors are open. If it's Wednesday night, if it's Tuesday night, if it's Monday morning, men's prayer, fellowship, Bible study, I don't know. But every time you get together with another believer, you need to have an expected spirit. That where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. I said, when we get together, we need to believe that God is going to move and that God is going to do something. Yeah. A touch or will weep and worship with much emotion. They'll get stared and laughed at and generally ignored by the throng and the press. They're not interested in the motions and the routine. They're not interested in the gossip. They weep and cry sometimes or a lot. Well, I'm not emotional. I'm just not that way, man. But I do believe. I believe Jesus. Do you really? I'm wondering if I told you that I could cut. I can't do this. If I could cut you a check for $100,000 right now. And I said, all I got to do is write out the check. If you'll come up here, I'll give it to you. If you believe me, which you should because I don't have that kind of money. But if you believe me, if Bill Gates were here and he said he could do that, you would run screaming down this aisle. That's right. I would need a new pair of shoes. Give me the check. That's right. That's good. Woo! Never moved an inch in his life and church sat like a bump on a pickle. When he hears that money coming down, it's like, Woo! I'm going to Vegas, man. Not emotional? I don't think so. True belief demands a response. True, true belief demands a reaction. If I told you you just won the lottery, please don't play the lottery. We don't believe in that. And you believe me, you'd probably be a little bit emotional. The reason I dance, the reason I shout when somebody tells me that God has saved my soul and that I'm going to heaven, it's because I really believe it. I believe that God is real. I believe that heaven is real. And I believe that I'm going. That's
healings and salvation. I need a miracle. I'm asking you this morning to come and, and touch him. And I have to tell you how. You've got to push beyond the crowd. Push beyond those that don't want anything from God. Don't worry about them. Because the woman with the issue reached beyond and threw a carnal multitude. She reached. She reached. The two blind men cried out. There was effort. In the worst of the worst situations. And Paul and Silas needed a miracle of liberation. They did not wallow in self-pity. They did something that required effort. Sang praises, prayed at midnight. It's simple. All you have to do this morning is just reach a little bit. Praise God. If we can, music, the music can play. If you don't want anything from God, if you don't need to be touched today, fine. That's your prerogative, but I know there's people here that need God. Amen. And these altars are open this morning. Amen. Yes. Why don't you come and touch Him? Amen. Why don't we come to this place and touch Him yes. with our worship and with our prayer? Right now? Yes. I don't know if you need a healing. Hallelujah. I don't know if you need salvation. If you need the Holy Ghost this morning, we will pray for you. If you've never repented of your sins, if you've never been baptized in Jesus' name, we will baptize you this morning. Right. <coughs> if you need a miracle, this is the place to be. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Come on, let's get desperate this morning. God, I've tried everything. My only option. Where I can see.